you very much, everybody. Well, welcome back. Nice to have you with us. And I've got a fun concert to play for you tonight. I see Harry Traxler is already listening here from Ohio. This should be a fun show. Uh, Lord willing, my internet will not go out tonight. We are having a bunch more snow here in Durango, Colorado today. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to do my best and keep playing like always. And the theme for tonight's concert is Raggin' the Hits. Uh, this idea occurred to me recently and was inspired by yet another one of the old Johnny Maddox albums that he did for Dot Records. And this one was done in the 1960s. And, uh, you know, normally I stick very strictly to vintage popular music from the ragtime and early jazz era, the very early 1900s and cut off in the 1930s and 40s. But today, or tonight rather, what I plan to do is start in the 1950s and then see how uh, much further forward I can go. That old album called Raggin' the Hits was mostly 1960s pop hits played in a ragtime piano style. So that's the theme for tonight's concert. And so I opened with one of my medleys of 1950s pop songs, uh, Music, 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 Mr. Sandman, and Mac the Knife, which was actually written back in the 1920s by Kurt Weill, but was a much bigger hit years later in the 50s. So let's see, the next song on the program is a tune that came out in the early 60s, 62 or 63, I believe. And like many of the tunes I plan to play tonight, this one uh, has good melody and harmony and rhythm, but it, it really makes a good old time piano style piece. This was written by a man from New Orleans named Alan Toussaint and was a big hit for the trumpet player Al Hurt and then uh, also, I believe, for a mild hit for Floyd Kramer, piano player from Nashville. So here is Java. That's Java. Great tune. You know, one of the things that I have struggled to do over the last several years in my career is to learn newer songs that are more recognizable to people. 
because uh, I think that's one of the ways in which we might kind of keep the early ragtime styles alive is if we take newer songs and play them in ragtime. The problem is, I just really don't care for the newer songs very much. And I've had, especially working here at the Strader Hotel in Durango, because it's, it's not a ragtime-centric audience, it's just the general public, I have had to force myself to learn some of these somewhat newer tunes. But even the newer ones, uh, you know, are, are largely 50 years old at this point. Uh, you have to have a certain quality of melody and, and harmony in order to play music on the piano, let alone in an advanced ragtime piano style. But here's another one which was an enormous hit in the 60s. I think I would consider it one of the last big hits of the honky-tonk piano craze. It was written by a man from Denmark, 1962, and he went by the name of Bent Fabric. Uh, on his records, he was called Bent Fabric. Why he would do that, I have no idea. But this is a fun tune. I know my parents like this. I used to get more requests for it than I do now. I feel like it's almost being forgotten a little bit. Uh, this is the Johnny Maddox arrangement of it. Alley Cat! much. Alley Cat. All right. Well, let me check all the websites. Just make sure everything's working tonight. Looks like it sure is. Oh, boy. Yeah. Already got 80 viewers on YouTube. That's, that's terrific. Alley Cat was a standard at all weddings back in the day. Well, that's news to me. I love reading the comments in the chat. Uh, on, on these streams. It's always a lot of fun. Usually hear from people from all around the world. You should uh, uh, type in the chat and let us all know where you're from. I wonder who wins the prize for being more far away from Durango, Colorado than anyone else. That would be kind of interesting. Um, and if you're new to my virtual concerts, I do accept online tips. All you have to do is send in a tip on PayPal or Venmo uh, just like you would do in person. And if you have requests, of course, I'm happy to do that. I prefer if it kind of sticks to the concert theme uh, to a certain degree. Tonight, I'm trying to take somewhat newer songs and play them in, in ragtime. Some of the songs that I'm going to play tonight, I'm not really doing them in ragtime. I'm just playing them the way that the songs are meant to be played. Uh, you might call it just popular piano music, pop piano styles. And uh, 
let's see. Uh, I'm going to s continue uh, f from the 1950s and, and then go forward in time through tonight's concert. I'll do one of my favorite 19. 50s popular artists for you next. And here's a nice picture of him. His name was Johnny Ray. And the first time I ever heard of Johnny Ray uh, was when I saw him on an, a really fun episode of the Jack Benny Show. And I was sitting there watching it with my late friend Ian Whitcomb, who was one of the British rock stars in the 1960s. And Ian told me that he had met Johnny Ray and, uh, of course, on the show, he sang his big hit song, Cry. Uh, I think he was on Columbia Records. One of my favorite things he did was a couple of duet records with Doris Day. And uh, so we're going to do Cry, which came out about 1951. Georgia Gibbs also had a mild hit record on that tune. And we're going to follow it with a song from 1953, this one, Just Walking in the Rain. So now, a little medley as tribute to Johnny Ray. And I love his singing style. He was definitely one of the precursors to rock and roll. Cry and just walking in the rain.
so much. A couple of songs maybe you haven't heard in a long time, but uh, that's a little example of some of the fun, popular music of the 1950s that I really like. And uh, the 1950s, and, and then a little bit into the 60s, saw sort of the death of what was known as Tin Pan Alley, the old-time music publishing business. Rock and roll took over, and after that, the piano as an instrument was not as popular. The, you know, in the early 1900s, every American home had a piano, and most children took piano lessons, and that started to disappear because, especially when the Beatles came along, everyone switched to guitar, which, in my opinion, is a crying shame. But <laughs> uh, they still wrote many good melodies throughout the 50s and 60s, and I've, I've learned some that, that I, I enjoy. Oh, Johnny Ray's second biggest hit was Walking My Baby Back Home. Yeah, I play that as well. That's an old 1930s song, however. Um, go ahead and send in some requests if you would like, folks. Please do. I'm happy to try and, and cover them. Hey, Kyla's listening in here on Twitch tonight. I appreciate that. If you're new to my concerts, please follow me on Twitch because once I get a hundred followers or subscribers, rather than I can uh, to get some extra tips and sell emotes and so forth. Appreciate that. Uh, one of the things I thought I'd do uh, is perhaps stray into country music a little bit. Uh, since I'm trying to do newer music, country songs have more traditional harmony, which I like. Even if you don't like the really sad singing, uh, <laughs> I've had to learn some of those songs too. So unless I get some other requests, I will go ahead and do that next. Um, let's see, I'm looking at requests. Yeah, Don't Fits Me In, that's a little too old. Uh, secondhand Rose might fit in, if we're talking about the Barbra Streisand version. Yeah, see, see, Gershwin, I'm not going to play that tonight because uh, that doesn't really fit with the musical theme for tonight's concert at all. Winchester Cathedral, I do plan to play that. And so, uh, Tennessee Waltz. You know, I also love Patti Page. She was a major 50s artist. I'll go ahead and play Tennessee Waltz for you. I think I got more than one request for it here. And um, even though this song was written in about 1948... It still kind of fits in.
Thank you very much. A uh, quick tribute to Patti Page. That was the Tennessee Waltz and then another one of her hits from the uh, late 50s. I think it came out in 56 or 57. A song called Old Cape Cod. Yes, I, I love that. That is truly one of the last beautiful melodies of the 1950s. And uh, so let's, let's get away from that period a little bit. And I saw a request there on YouTube for was it Winchester Cathedral? I, I learned that song not too long ago. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, I, that was on YouTube. So I'm going to play that for you. This was kind of a pop hit from the 1960s, but it's sort of in a vintage style. It was done by a band that was kind of a recreation of a 1920s vaudeville style group. And uh, I was talking... Uh, I see there's a little bit of discussion about Johnny Maddox here. I was talking to Johnny's son, Scott Maddox, two or three years ago, and he said this is one of the songs that his dad had to play all the time when it first came out because it was such an enormous hit. And I, I, I had never heard the tune, so I looked it up, and I love it. So here's Winchester Cathedral. <laughs> Winchester Cathedral. Thank you very much. You know, my performances of a couple of these tunes might be a little bit short because after the Ten Pen Alley period, they quit writing verses for most popular songs. You know, in the 1930s, the harmonies and the music was at its most advanced. And by the 1950s and 60s, it had been greatly simplified. Most pop songs are about 32 measures long. In the old days, you'd have a verse in addition to that. And with these newer songs, there's not as much material there to begin with. Now, uh, since I did a kind of an upbeat tune, let's, let's cover a couple of the country songs I was planning to play for you. In fact, I learned, I learned these from Johnny too. It's something that you just have to do if you work in a saloon. You have to learn some country music. It's funny to me that saloons and also uh, the term honky-tonk has been applied to ragtime as well as country music. They're kind of intertwined. Uh, it's just, it's really honky-tonk, I think, originally was more of a term for uh, a locale, a place, a dive, or a bar, or a saloon, rather than music. Now, uh, we're going to start out with some of the real classic country tunes. This, these songs also go back to the early 50s. We're going to do three of them, all three Hank Williams tunes. Uh, kind of in a ragtime style, starting with Your Cheatin' Heart, and then we'll do uh, Jambalaya, and finally, Hey Good Looking. So here's my Hank Williams medley. <laughs>
you very much. That's my Hank Williams medley. Boy, we've got a lot of viewers tonight. I'm thrilled. Thank you, folks. I'm trying to do some familiar songs for you tonight. And instead of doing uh, more country music back to back, let's do this song, which I have sitting right on the piano. I pulled out this edition of the sheet music. I thought it was fascinating how many big stars had their picture on the cover of this music. And this is a song that I bet you will recognize, even if you don't know the name of it. It's called More. And I believe this may have originally been an Italian melody. It was written for a movie called Mondo Kane. I have not seen the movie. Uh, 1957, copyrighted in Rome, Italy, uh, then in 1958 in the United States. And this song was such an enormous hit. Let me read you some of the names on the cover. It says, recorded more than 150 times by such artists as Nat King Cole, Andy Williams, Connie Francis, Frank Sinatra, Johnny Mathis, Brenda Lee, Montovani. These are all names that are just huge. And I'll tell you who else knows this song. My mother knows this song. <laughs> she played it when she was young. And I'm going to play it for you now. More. for Italian tourists once in a while, and sometimes they recognize it. I don't know the whole history on that song, but I've always loved it. I love the emotes here on Twitch. I assume these are emotes. I don't know. I'm an ancient, ancient uh, Luddite, I suppose. <laughs> now, what's next? Uh, let's get the country music out of the way, shall we? And I'm going to play two more for you. Well, maybe even one more after this at the end of the concert. But, but for now, one of my truly favorite artists is Patsy Cline. And she really did not become popular or well-known until 1957 
and she sang a song. At first, she did not even want to make the recording because she didn't think the song was that good, but it ended up being just about one of her biggest hits, uh, Walkin' After Midnight, and with it, a song. This is the only one I've actually played that was written by Willie Nelson, but I like him quite a bit. He's done a lot of the old standards, so I admire Willie Nelson, and this was one of his first hits, Crazy, which is from 1960, and uh, we'll do that first. And after that, Walkin' After Midnight, Patsy Cline's big hit from 1957. You know, I might stop for just a second and tell you uh, one of the great stories. Uh, this, uh, again, comes from Johnny Maddox. You see, he knew Patsy and had worked with her in person. Uh, the same year that she had that hit record in 57, they did a show together in somewhere in East Tennessee. I think it was Maryville, Tennessee. And, you know, the people really had not heard of her yet. Patsy won the Arthur Godfrey talent show. But at that time, Johnny Maddox was better known than she was, and he told me that he closed the show, believe it or not. He said he couldn't quite remember what she sang that night. I sure would love to have known. And uh, he found an extra copy of the program from that show they did together with both of their pictures in it and gave the program to me. I just treasure that so much. Um, and he really loved Patsy. Uh, now, here's the story. The story is that they were invited to have breakfast together after the show somewhere in East Tennessee up in the mountains. And so this was in the middle of the summer and Johnny and Patsy got in a bus together and started running, riding up into the mountains and the bus ran out of gas. And so they had to sit out on the side of the road and it was just, you know, 95 degrees and humid in the middle of the summer in Tennessee. And Patsy had a mink stole on and so Johnny looks over at Patsy and he says, uh, aren't, Patsy, aren't you burning up? And she said, I just bought it and I'm going to wear it. <laughs>
Patsy Klein. Thank you very much, folks. Oh, let's see. Well, go ahead and send in requests, as always. <laughs> Adam's got the camera shaking again, yeah. I haven't been able to do anything about that. I guess it just adds authenticity. I have a desk with my computer on it right by the piano, and I really don't want to move all that stuff around. That's what I decided some time ago. Now, let's see. Oh, I know what I should do for you. Spanish fleet. Afraid I don't know that African beat. Don't know that either, Leo. Afraid I don't. Um, I, I, I was joking about being a Luddite a few minutes ago. Well, especially when it comes to music, I am. I'm, I'm trying to play for you the examples of somewhat newer songs that I think are still really good compositions. And some of that, of course, came from Broadway. And Broadway music stayed of a high quality for longer than other uh, genres. So let me do some Broadway music for you from the 1960s. And these are very popular songs, both written by the same man, a songwriter named Jerry Herman. And he was still living until recently. I wish I could have met him. And so from 1963, his biggest hit of all, Hello Dolly. And then I'll follow that immediately with another one of his Broadway hits introduced in the later 1960s on Broadway by Angela Lansbury, and it's called Mame. So now two songs by Jerry Herman, Hello Dolly and Mame. by Jerry Herman. And uh, I forgot to mention, before she died, I asked Angela Lansbury to autograph the song Mame for me. I sh should have brought out the music to show it to you. And playing that song, Hello Dolly, reminds me of Louis Armstrong. 
And you know, another song I could have done tonight if I pulled out the sheet music for it is What a Wonderful World. I love that. One of Louis' last big hits. And uh, well, maybe I'll just have to do a, a sequel to this concert, Raggin' the Hits Part 2, because I bet I could come up with enough songs to do it. I'm always trying to learn more. One of the songs that Johnny did on that old album, Raggin' the Hits, has become a favorite of mine recently. I didn't think about it uh, until a few months ago. A friend of mine that works on the railroad here in Durango mentioned this song, and I said, you know, I think that's on one of the old Johnny Maddox albums. And sure enough, it is. It was a major hit in the mid-60s, and it just does not sound like 60s music at all. It's nothing like rock and roll. It's almost sort of part of the folk revival of that period. Uh, but even more than that, it just sounds like an old-time tune that you might have heard in a saloon or a mining camp, you know, in the year 1900. But it was done in the 60s by a group called the Village Stompers. Maybe some of you already know what tune I'm going to play next. And they were kind of a Dixieland jazz-style band called the Village Stompers. And this song is Washington Square. And I've been playing it several times uh, recently in the Diamond Bell. So... I want to do it for you now. This is Washington Square. Washington Square. Isn't that a cool tune? Train David. I didn't realize that was you. David Dewey. Well, so glad you've tuned in tonight. You're, you're hearing kind of a different program than what I usually do. Uh, he's with the uh, Oroville, California Concert Association. I'm thrilled I'm going to be playing out there for uh, folks in Oroville, California. But unfortunately, it will not be until sometime in 2024. I will email you all back uh, tomorrow. That's on my to-do list. Now, let's see. What else will we like? Uh, requests, most welcome. Uh, but I try and stick with the theme for the concert. I, I don't have to do that, but I like to present these ideas kind of as a whole with a historical narrative. And then you can go back and watch them on YouTube anytime for posterity. And so I think it's better if there's a little bit of a, a direction to the concert. In, for those reasons. Now, unless I get a request, maybe I will do another song that I have sitting here on the piano. Boy, got almost 120 viewers on YouTube. This is fantastic tonight, folks. Thank you.
<laughs> oh boy. Who's posting all this stuff on uh, on Twitch? Backseat Saucman. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I of course Cole Porter's right up my alley, but I'm I'm going to save that for a future concert. Rock and Robin, that would be fun, Kelly. I've never played it, but I love that song. No. Well, I think I'll do this. This is the song that closes that old album Johnny did called Raggin' the Hits. And uh, this is also from the 60s, 1962. Hmm. Maybe it was written in Germany. It was copyrighted in Hamburg. Then in 1963 in the United States. Dankeschön. <laughs> I guess it makes sense it was written in Germany. Dankeschön. And uh, Wayne Newton had a big hit record on this. I have to tease my mother a little bit as well. She remembers this song from when she was young. I remember she and my grandmother talking about this song one time. It's a very simple melody, but I like it. I think it's catchy and beautiful. Dankeschön. <laughs> Say it in German this time. Dankeschön. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, it's 7 o'clock here in Durango, and so that means it's time for me to do another little announcement. If you are watching my concerts for the first time, I do accept virtual tips for these performances, and uh, all you have to do is send in a tip on PayPal or Venmo, it's been very helpful to my career, even though COVID has waned. I know it's still out there. And if you enjoy this kind of music, it helps me to keep it alive. You know, there's no obligation, just a small amount here and there it really does add up. And it's, it's very helpful. I'm thrilled I've got so many viewers on YouTube tonight. Uh, Mac the Knife, yeah, I already played that at the beginning of the concert. And if you don't trust PayPal and Venmo, I have a P.O. box on my website for checks as well. Now go ahead and send in some requests, folks. Brazil. I could play that for you. It's, a, it's an older song from the 1930s. Doesn't quite fit the theme for the concert, but I could do it. I think what I will do is play a song. I got a request for this ahead of time. I think it was on Facebook. Well, it was on Facebook because I only do the announcements every week on Facebook. And uh, I got a request for this song and I was thinking about playing it anyway. This, we're getting into the late 1960s now. 1969 is the only Burt Bacharach song that I've ever played. 
and I love it. It was written for the movie Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, and one of the reasons I'm fond of this is because part of that movie was filmed here in Durango, Colorado. It's filmed on the Rio Grande Narrow Gauge Railroad, and uh, a number of the local locations are very recognizable. The song is cute and fun, and I'd sure love to meet Burt Bacharach while he's still alive. Maybe get him to autograph the music for this. I've got to get on that. I have so many things to do and so, so little time. I've got to write him a letter. Here from 1969 is the song which I believe won the Academy Award for Best Song that year. Correct me if I'm wrong. Raindrops keep falling on my head. Or in Durango tonight where it's snow. Drops keep falling on my head. Thank you so much. Better write Bert soon. He's 94. Yeah, I guess I better get on it. Oh, Carl, it's so good to see you. Missed you and Amy last week. <clears throat> Almost called to make sure everything was okay because it's so odd that you weren't here. <laughs> A Misty I could do. Yes, I certainly could. Now, let's see. Two, three, four, five. I have five more things on my list for tonight that I want to get through uh, for sure. That's the only Bacharach song I know. I don't know any others. Misty. Okay, well, I've got another request here for Misty. Misty was in a Clint Eastwood movie. I didn't know that. Uh, I, I did know Clint Eastwood is a piano player. My friend Bob Milne has met him at the Bohemian Club. I think one of the tunes he said he played was the Honky Tonk Train Blues, believe it or not. Okay, Misty. This was written by the famous jazz pianist Errol Gardner in the 50s. And I made a medley of it with another song that was big in the 50s. It was a hit for the Kingston Trio, who I love. And it's called Scotch and Soda. So we're going to do Misty and then Scotch and Soda.
thank you very much. A couple of jazzy tunes from the mid 50s. I'm glad I was able to get in a few rec more requests there for you folks. Um, let's do something a little more up tempo now. And uh, this is going to surprise you. <laughs> I have had, you know, so many requests over the years in the Diamond Bell to play uh, music by the Beatles. And I have kind of mixed feelings about them. I have not even listened to that much of their music, but I had to learn something to satisfy those requests. I finally sat down and did it, I guess a year or two ago. And the song that makes the best ragtime piano style piece out of their whole catalog is, is pretty obvious. It's when I'm 64 and um, I believe it was written for the album called Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, I think. And I've been looking for quite some time for the original sheet music for this. And just about two days ago, I finally found it on eBay. The original piano vocal sheet music for When I'm 64 by the, the Beatles. Well, specifically Paul McCartney and one of the others, I think. And uh, finally found it. Had to pay a little more for it than I probably should have, but I think it was worth it because it might come in useful. So here, in tribute to them, is When I'm 64. style song, doesn't it? The uh, harmonies in the bridge are a little bit strange. <laughs> Sounds more like rock, which I don't care for, but anyhow. Yeah, who is this and where is Adam? <laughs> I told you tonight's concert would be a little bit different, and apparently it's also popular since I've got more viewers on YouTube than I've had in quite some time. Terrific. Well, uh, the great music continued to be written on Broadway, and Two of my favorite composers of that style uh, are Kander and Ebb, John Kander and Fred Ebb. I love their music. It's really original and clever, and a lot of it is very much like the old 1920s jazz, which is why it's so great. So I'm going to do a medley of their songs for you. These are, again, ones I've learned kind of to satisfy requests for newer tunes, and uh, we're going to start out with Cabaret from the hit musical they wrote in the 60s. And after Cabaret, we'll do And All That Jazz from the musical Chicago, which I believe was written about 1975. I think it became an even bigger hit in later years. It was revived on Broadway and they made a movie out of it. 
I did see it on Broadway once when I was in New York a few years ago. I'm not sure if it's still playing or not. It's one of the longest running shows on Broadway. And uh, I don't care for Phantom of the Opera very much myself. Candor and Amber, much more my style. And, and then we're going to end up with a song that they wrote for a movie, actually. And uh, that, of course, is New York, New York. It was originally written for a movie with Liza Minnelli. And then later on, Frank Sinatra recorded it. And it was the last big hit that Sinatra had in his own lifetime. So here are three songs by Candor and Ebb.
you so much. New York, New York. I love that song. I think that's one of my favorite, somewhat newer pop songs, written in 1977. Unfortunately, I think that's about as modern as tonight's concert is going to get. <laughs> Well, I had a fun experience this weekend. I was down in Albuquerque briefly. I, I know I've got a lot of friends down there. I didn't have time to see everybody. I was just there for one night, briefly. Drove down there to go see uh, one of the more contemporary artists that I like and admire very much. In fact, here's a picture of her and the music that she autographed for me a couple of years ago. This is Loretta Lynn's sister, Crystal Gale. And I really learned this song for a friend of mine, another friend on the railroad here in Durango, who loves Crystal. Uh, this was her big hit, 1977, same year as the last tune, Don't It Make My Brown Eyes Blue. I have to say I enjoyed her show even more than I thought I would because she did a lot of the old, old standard tunes that I didn't expect her to do. She did several Patsy Cline songs and so forth. Uh, but this one here was her very biggest hit, Don't It Make My Brown Eyes Blue. so much. Don't it make my brown eyes blue. Well, I sat in the very front row, well, almost the front row, and watched Crystal perform in Albuquerque on Friday night, and uh, I just have to say, I thought she was very classy. She just had a nice manner about her, uh, in addition to singing beautifully and doing a lot of great material. I, I was impressed. So that's one of my newer songs that I have learned but I'm saving something kind of fun here for the end of the concert. I practiced it all afternoon. Here's hoping I can play it pretty well for you. Earlier this summer, a friend of mine took me to the Hollywood Bowl to see John Williams conduct the orchestra. And I have always enjoyed his music, but I was so inspired after seeing that concert in person that I started to collect the sheet music from his movies. And, uh, of course, he's still writing, even though he's 90. I think he writes very good melodies. And among his most popular movies, of course, is the Star Wars series. 
<laughs> so I'm going to try and play some music from Star Wars for you. If you look up Ragtime on YouTube, the number one video with the most views on all of YouTube is Brian Wright and Martin Spitznagel playing the Cantina Band song from the original Star Wars movie. So I'm going to try and play that for you now and uh, kind of inspired by their piano duet video. Uh, but I'm actually going to start with the main title music. I'm going to do a little bit of that and then we'll go into the Cantina Band which is really fun because it is truly ragtime in style. In fact, on the original sheet music here from that, that same magical year of 1977, it says ragtime right on the tempo marking. John Williams, I don't know whether he wrote that in there himself or not, but that's exactly what it is from Star Wars. So here's the main title and then the cantina band music from Star Wars.
very much. Hope you enjoyed that. Definitely a little bit of a different type of tune than I have played in most of my concerts, but uh, I think I should commit that to memory and then play it a little more often. If there's any last minute requests, speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> I may only do one more song tonight, we'll see. I'm kind of tired from the trip to Albuquerque. Let's see, what else have we got? I'm gonna check all the websites. Sometimes I forget to uh, check all the websites. Hey, David, I'm so glad you were listening tonight. It's my friend David Dibble, who's a filmmaker. He's the one that took me uh, to see John Williams. That was, it was very memorable. Oh, I wish I did know Indiana Jones. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I think would be appropriate for tonight's concert is I've been doing all these pop songs in a ragtime style. Well, I should do some actual ragtime for you as well. And so, uh, as an example of contemporary ragtime, really the very best is the extremely talented Tom Breyer. And he's very popular, and uh, especially online, it seems. So let me play Razor Blades for you to close out the night. How does that sound? Oh, someone's suggesting 76 trombones. Yeah, I've thought about learning that. I really would make a great song for me from the Music Man. I get a lot of requests for the Music Man. I just didn't have time this week. You know, this, this was a fun concert, so maybe I should do Ragging the Hits Part 2 at some point here in uh, the near future. But for now, here's... Razor blades. That's Razor Blades by Tom Breyer. Yeah, his music is, is quite remarkable. I think he's one of the best of all the contemporary ragtime composers. And with that, I think I'll quit about five minutes early here tonight. And thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate those virtual tips. 
I'm grateful to all of you for helping with my career. And I will be back next Sunday night with another virtual concert on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Please join me. I'll be back to my usual vintage music. And uh, it, I may do my uh, Disney-themed concert next week. We'll see. I kind of want to get my piano tuned again before I do all of those beautiful ballads and stuff from the Disney movies. We'll see. I'm not sure, but I will announce it on Facebook as always. Thanks a bunch, folks, and good night for now.